I'm Steve and this is Abandoned and I'm here with the lovely Lucy to talk about a traction engine but first you've got to play the intro so if you can just wait a second. Well I should have finished now. So hi Lucy, uh, uh, we are, what you can't see is the camera at the moment is perched on a traction engine. Can you tell me the name of the traction engine first? Roland. Roland. And how long have you been working on Roland? Actually, with Roland, we've only had her for a few months now, um, so she is new to it. So you bought her pre-built, pre-made, pre-restored? Yes, definitely, yeah. So that's fantastic, actually, because this video is going to be less about the semantics and how a steam engine works. We're not going to find out about the pitch and diameters, the flywheel speed, the... Uh, we're going to be finding out how the engine performs on the road, what it's like to have a, well, a steam engine in 2023. <laughs> uh, first of all, have you been hit by the, like, the fuel prices? Has that impacted coal or anything? Yeah, coal is... Um, Coal is a tricky thing to get hold of now, especially the right types of coal, because you can't just burn on anything, and each different type of coal affects it. So, yeah, coal is something that's gone up in price. You said there's a the right type of coal. Yeah. What's the wrong type? <laughs> and, and, no, there's no sort of wrong type, but there's different types. You burn different ways, and you learn to burn on a certain type of coal. That's all. Right, okay. I, well, I, I learned that. I didn't know if about you. Was that something that you learned when you got the engine? Yeah, something definitely. You knew? Yeah, no, it's something I learned when I got to the engine. I think it's a, it's a work, work in progress. Is there a tutorial? Like guide on how to own a steam engine or does it just come to you? No, you just ask the lovely people around. We're very fortunate that the steam community is a very friendly community. I've and noticed everyone that, wants yeah. To jump in and help. So if you sit there stuck or ask a question, they're more than willing to jump in and explain or show you how. So the big question is, have you driven it? I haven't driven her, I have steered her. Um, I have, there is a difference. There is a difference. Can, is can a we know the difference, please? So the driver is the person who gets her moving, keeps her in motion, keeps her in fire and steam, making sure the water's right. The steersman is the person who concentrates on the steering. Steersman? Yeah. Didn't even know that had a name. <laughs> so it's actually a separate to so someone separate controlling job. the speed and someone else controlling the steering. Yes. Does that job. ever get out of sync? Not really, no. It tends to, you need a good, you need a good driver to know how the steersman's working. People do do them on their own, so you can single man it where you're driving and steering on it one Is that where you see people juggling? Yes. Like, oh, okay. Which they are a bit tricky, especially with the bigger mm -hmm. engines. So have you steered this on the main road? Yes, I have steered Every on the main road. Been, road how is that? How how do you drive? And how many tons is this? What got me wrong? Twelve ton. Yeah. So how do you drive a twelve ton steam engine on public roads? How does that work? Um, you need a lot of people around you. We tend to have a support car, as we call them, that goes ahead to make sure the roads kept clear. If there's any really narrow bits coming up, they'll stop the traffic to make sure no one ends up having to reverse it one way back. Because backing one of these up, especially with a trailer on, it, is an interesting. Affair. I can imagine because of the whole visit to them. There's obviously a few top trunk questions in there. Firstly, how fast can you make it go? What's the top speed you can take? <laughs> you think? The wheel can take. Everyone wants to know how the speed is. About 15 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm guessing on something like this, that feels a lot quicker than it is. Yeah, especially when you're up top driving the steering wheel. I can, I can imagine. Down the hill. Yeah. Quite, yeah. I imagine down the hill you're trying to make it not go over 50. Yeah, you're trying to keep it nice and steady and held back, which isn't always the easiest thing. So that, that comes to the, the next question, really, about getting it on the road. Does this need special? permissions from the government or does it need an MOT? What, how do you get this thing from the field onto the road? It doesn't get an MOT. Uh, I think an MOT instructor would be looking at it going, what earth do I look for? Uh, they do need licenses and things um, and the insurance and so on. So they, they need all the usual so, things. Yeah. She's got a number plate as well. Very old fashioned number plate. I, I did see that, <laughs> yes. I didn't know if that was from her old days or was that from the modern era. That's what an official Manx registration. Uh, that came from behind the camera. Official Manx registration. So it's registered for Isle of Man. Yeah, that makes sense. Isle of Man. Isle of Man. Wow, imagine getting that across here. On a ferry, yep. She's a big girl. <laughs> Did you buy it from the Isle of Man and bring it across? Um, the other owner owns half of her and lives in the Isle of Man. Oh, so not the half we're looking at then? Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, the other half. <laughs> I'm going to try and see if I can get some B-roll or the thing, but I probably forget. Um, so just a, a few more questions. So mainly, do you plan to do anything with this engine in the future, or is it how you want it to be? Uh, is it how you're going to do any work to it? Or? You're always modifying them, so you're always oh, yeah. finding things that need fixing and bits and pieces. Um, she's got a couple of tweaks that need making at the minute to do with water injection. Um, but mostly, she is a beautiful engine. In, in it is absolutely, I, I absolutely stunning. I absolutely am. I'm floored every time I come by the, the level of... I'm guessing during their working lives, I were nowhere near this clean. But, Actually, um, they used to keep them really? Yeah, needed to keep them nice wow, and clean. Learning. They were very proud of them. They're, they're very imagine. important engines to them, so keeping them clean. And the, keeping them clean is to make sure that they're working right as well. So yeah, we 
need to be kept to a certain level of clean, especially sure when everyone's seen, things arrive. I'm sure everyone's seen the archive footage of old steam trains where they look really grimy in the 60s. <laughs> I'm guessing that wasn't the case with these things. Not, not so much. I mean, some were obviously left to wreck for a while. Well, obviously this one survived. Do you know the survival story? I'm not sure, actually. I, I don't know the survival story, I'm afraid. That's fine, no. <laughs> you said you only got it a few months ago, so that's fine. I'm sure that's something you'll uncover as you go along. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say to wrap this up that people may not know about traction engine ownership? <laughs> No, you just end up being permanently grubby. We always look like we've never showered for a week. Um, and they just, they take a lot of doing. There's always stuff that needs to be done on them, whether it's polishing, whether it's oiling them. Sally's up there oiling now. Oh, crikey. Um, or whether there's, yeah, whether you're actually firing your ring. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a short one. Hopefully you will like this. Thank you so much for watching. Look, I'm going to now awkwardly move my camera from your wheel. <laughs> no worries. There they are.